<laughs> You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Okay, first up we got Skull Kids version 2.0. So I've changed nothing about the mask. I've made the hat a bit more sturdy. The original was far too flexible and all that. Plus I have made his pointy shoes, his actually actual, you know, sort of skirt piece. I have done the glove printing on the hands as well, and that's really the, all that has changed about the Skull Kid. So, how about you say we go on to our next minifigure? Yeah, okay, second up we have got one of the new figures, Link, from the Child Era, because if you follow the timeline correctly, all the way up from Skyward Sword, all the way down to Ocarina Time, where it splits off into three. If you just go down the middle to the child timeline, you will find Majora's Mask. And these are the weapons that you see Link carrying in the Lost Woods when he is attacked by the Skull Kid. So I thought I'd just show you this. And the sword is the Kokiri sword version 2 because it did not appear like this in Ocarina of Time. With the Majora's Mask game you can upgrade this sword and I have made the two upgrades that you can have for this sword. But also we have got the Hylian shield right here with the Triforce and the wings on it and Link's hat slash hair does come off all it really was was blue tack molding and a skateboarder helmet i do believe it was and you may ask why did you make it removable well majora's mask it's a game about masks so what do you precisely think that I needed his hat to come off for. Easy. Now I believe this mask is called the Birdo mask. It is used, this is by the way an accessory um, for Link. This is used to basically with the Sonic command I believe it's called to make cuckoos follow you and when you've made them follow you about for a certain amount of time in this particular side quest to get the bunny hood which is another mask that lets you run very fast uh, the cuckoos will grow from babies to adults because that is what the side quest basically is actually so what other accessories have we got and I appear to be missing one accessory which is um, the razor sword which is the upgraded version of this and if you upgrade the Razor Sword, again you get a Gilded Sword. By the way, all these 3D printed pieces are provided by the website known as www.shapeways.com Also we've got the Great Fairy Sword here that you get from those creepy, very creepy Great Fairies. And don't get me started on the Great Fairies mask. And here's the last accessory for Link, I'll just put it in his hand. It is the Mirror Shield, which allows you to reflect a light onto sunspots to open doors, but also it's used in a... I would say it was a boss battle, maybe a mini boss, I'm not sure. But that's all really there is to Link, so let's move on to the next figure. Okay, the next figure here, we have got Jim or Jimmy, whatever you want to call him, of the Bomber Kids. Not much detailing on him, because I didn't need to do much. Now, the Bomber Kids is like a notorious group in Termina, which is where Majora's Mask takes place. And this guy is the leader of them. You have to capture all of them. In the game of Hide and Seek, they will give you the Bomber's Notebook, which which will allow you to keep track and record of your side quests. And that's really it for him. Oh, also, he's very mischievous and um, 
well, he's a kid. <laughs> what can I say? On to the next one. Warning for next minifigure. We are going into spoiler territory. Spoiler territory. For the game, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This is spoiler territory. So if you do not want to see this figure, go and play the game and then come back to this figure. But if you wish to proceed, proceed at your own risk of spoilers. Okay, you heard the spoiler warning there. Here is the next figure. There, This is one of the children that you meet on the moon. Who strangely looks like the Happy Mask Salesman from the back. If you ever played the game yourself, I haven't. But I've seen playthrough of it. And this particular child is wearing one of the remains of the four bosses. Um... This remain being Odoa, the giant tiki man. There's also Georg, who's a giant fish, piranha thing. There's Goat, or, uh, well, people call him Goat, but I, his actual name is Gott. Um, he's a giant robot laser goat. <laughs> That's about three, isn't it? And, of course, the last boss had to be um, Majora itself but you basically meet these kids and they will be four of them will be wearing the boss remains oh yeah there's twin mold um so that's actually five so you find these kids you play with them you have to give them your masks um i still don't get that but never mind um you find them surrounding a tree and there's a lonely kid who looks exactly like the others but wearing Majora's Mask. Like I said, the other four will be wearing the boss's remains. So that's a bit of backstory about this character. So, on to the next one. Okay, we have got Link's first form of the game. And of course the game is called Majora's Mask, so... This basically has transformation masks to turn into different characters. So, with the... Deku Mask, he transforms into Deku Link here, and I used a Sandy Cheeks helmet from Lego Spongebob to get the round doneness of the head and then short minifigure legs, you know, and you can see bits of blue tack there, and the rest is just colouring pens, pencils, um, sharpies, that's the sort of stuff I use. Now, there is a theory about this particular one because um, when Link first falls into Termina whilst chasing Skull Kid, because Skull Kid has t taken his ocarina of time, don't know why he has that on him in the first place, but never mind, uh, Link that is, um, not just Skull Kid, you know, of course, um, but anyway, he gets transformed into this Deku form and he is not able to transform back until he has triumphed over the first temple. Um, I think it's the first temple, or possibly before, and the Happy Mask salesman places on the healing. Um, the You transform back into Human Link, and Deku Mask is now one of your four transformation masks. But the fourth one you do not get until the end of the game. But people believe, because of the Sona healing, um, it basically traps spirits inside of masks, I think, is the basic gist of it, and you get their powers. Um, there's this Deku butler in the Deku Palace you meet, and he um, says you remind him of his son, and at the very beginning, when it's giving you all the basic tutorial type stuff, there's this dead Deku scrub tree, which people theorise to believe the Deku butler's kid um, has been killed by Skull Kid, so you are able to transform into a Deku. So that's what people theorise. It's a little bit dark, but also something to support this theory at the end of Majora's Mask, during the credit sequence, you see the dead Deku scrub, which obviously your, um, you know, the spirit came from 
so you could use it as a transformation mask and be cursed in the first place by Skull Kid, but you see the Deku Butler weeping over this dead Deku scrub, which e leads even more people to believe this is the Deku Butler's son who went out on an adventure but never came back because of Skull Kid. Mind you, it's really Majora's Mask controlling Skull Kid, so in a way, Skull Kid can't be responsible for his actions while wearing the mask. So, that's a, another bit of backstory, uh, on to the next one. Okay, we have got Goron Link now. I wanted to use um, the Toy Story Woody Arms, or Zerg Arms, because... Oh, I'll show you the back printy as well, I haven't been talking much about that. Um, I wanted to use those because they were more classic long Goron Arms. Unfortunately, I did not have time, so this is the best I could do. So... This is the second transformation mask that Lynx gets, uh, called the Goron Mask, of course, which is one of the races that you meet in the Legend of Zelda series. But the twist is, um, everybody remembers Darmani the Sage, surely from Ocarina of Time, if you played that game or at least heard of it, which people should have heard of it and played it. Um, not necessarily anybody, but everybody basically everybody in Hyrule has a Termina counterpart Darmani has a Termina counterpart but the problem is he was trying to protect his village and a snowstorm blew over and eventually he got killed and you have to follow his ghost to his grave play the song of healing his spirit is healed and it goes inside of a mask and that's how you're able to transform into Goron Link, and hence why everybody thinks when you talk to them that you're the great Darmani, apart from you're not. You're just using his powers and his form, apart from, of course, the Link hat that stays with um, the first three transformation masks, not the last one. So that's a bit of backstory about him, and also you get the mask at Snowhead. Snowhead? Yeah, Snowhead Village. Yeah, I think so. Uh, correct me in the comment section down below if I'm wrong. My Zelda knowledge is still a bit rusty these days. So, on to the second to last minifig. Okay, we got Link's third transformation, Zora Link. With these cool little th things um, in game, you use them as boomerangs to shoot slash stun enemies. As you can see, like I said, with all Link's transformations, he keeps his basic green hat, but also his green bottom part of the green tunic. Well, at least for this form and the Deku form. Um, a bit of backstory behind this particular one. Again, it's another dead person, or rather, it's dead Zora. Basically, you go to Great Bay Beach to go to the next temple, but then this Zora body is flowing in the water. You go and rescue him. His name is Macau, and he is the guitarist for the Zora band of Great Bay, and he was trying to get back the lead singer Lulu's eggs from the Gerudo Pirates, who were nearby, but obviously something really bad happened to him, he wound up on shore, you have to get him out of the water, and um, he has like a final wish to you, and something like, he says something like, can you heal me, or something like that, um, and of course Link takes out his Ocarina, because he's got it back by this point in the game, he uses the Son Healing, which the Happy Mask Salesman taught him straight, like, more or less at the beginning of the game, heals Macau, but Macau, of course, dies, and his spirit is put in a mask, which you use to transform into Zora Link, which then, of course, you carry out as Macau and his final request, just like Darmani, actually, so, that's basically it for Zora Link. Let's go on to the final minifigure, which, uh, in my opinion, is the coolest one I made. 
Spoiler territory. We are entering more spoiler territory. More spoiler territory. As a warning. Warning. If you do not want to be spoiled, then end. Skip about uh, two minutes into the video to the end and see the outro and then to stop watching the video or whatever. But this is spoiler territory once more. Yeah, okay, we have got the last transformation mask and also, as you heard, spoiler territory. So, once you get up to the moon and you talk to the four first kids wearing the boss's remains, you talk to the kid wearing the draw's mask, he wants to play one final game of um, goody versus baddie and he says you're the baddie and he gives you the fourth transformation mask being the most powerful mask of all being the fierce deity mask or deity however you want to pronounce it you put it on you become the fierce deity which basically looks like Link as an adult but almost as a god in a way or something and fierce deity people believe that um, I've forgotten how people believe he got trapped inside a mask, but people believe that he was the Termina counterpart to Link because over the course of the game you meet um, Termina counterparts to people you've already met in Ocarina of Time in Hyrule. Apart from the Happy Mask salesman who somehow manages to traverse worlds. So, he's the only sort of one who doesn't have a counterpart, but also, it seems like Link does have a counterpart, but people believe that the Fierce Deity is him. So, you use this guy to defeat Majora and complete the game with his awesome and double helix sword, which is actually held in two hands, but I just put in one hand. And I'm very pleased how this came out. I'm pleased with all of them, but especially this one. Like, the detail I've managed to put in on the chest, the arms, the wrists, you know, everything about this figure I love. And, honestly, these figures are made even better just with the Shapeway accessories, which I'm really pleased with, which I am using for more customs in the future, because I've got more custom Ledger Zelda minifigures uh, from other Legend of Zelda games and also some other Nintendo franchises to review coming to you very soon, probably next month or something. So that's basically it. So let's do a close up of all of them bunched together and do the outro. Okay, everybody, time to say the outro, and one last thing, I am sorry I lost the Razor Sword, which was, again, the special 3D printed part, which, again, like I've already said at the beginning of the video, is an upgraded version of the Kokiri Sword version 2. Why I say version 2 is because it did not look like this in Ocarina of Time. Um, but anyway, here are all the minifigures now. Some of them, like, uh, Tattle and Tail? I I get the names mixed up, but one of them's tail, one of them's tail, and then the Happy Mask Salesman here. Um, I did not show them in this review because I did not upgrade or do anything for them, but I thought they would look great for the final shot slash outro for this video. But if you would like to see the review on them, just go into the channel and you should be able to find the video very easily. If you cannot, I will make well, actually, I will make sure to link that video down in the description below. And I hope you have enjoyed this My Way is Celebrating Majora's Mask 3D this year, which I have managed to purchase the uh, limited edition version, surprisingly, plus console. So, ooh, can't wait to do unboxing video of those. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you leave a like, favorite, share, subscribe, and... Until the next video, remember to stay golden, stay frosty, and bye -sies.